Wheat's a monocot and is one of the most produced and consumed cereal crops in the world next to corn and rice. Wheat's mostly used for human consumption uh, through the use of flour. You can take the raw seed and ground it into flour and depending on the cultivar there's there's actually different qualities of flour. Also you can take the seed and you can ferment it and make drinks like beer or whiskey. And one of the last uses is you can take the remaining parts that not the seed like the stalk and that can be ground into wheat bran or it can be baled and sold as wheat straw for animal bedding. Here's a couple diagrams about the seed and other parts of wheat. Um, it's, wheat's important in society, um, or it's some of its important history is that as well as barley and rye, wheat evolved from an ancient grass called Triticiae. Also, importantly, it was one of the earliest cultivated crops, which means it was partly responsible for the transition from nomadic people to um, crop cultivation. Some of its cultural or religious significance is the Greeks, the Romans, the Sumer Sumerians, and the Finnish all have mythological gods or goddesses of wheat because of how important it was. And even today, it's considered sacred in some areas of China. And with Christianity, it's signified in the Bible as love and charity. Wheat originated around 10,000 years ago in southeastern Turkey, and within about a thousand years, it became more diverse with the different cultivars in areas in other areas of the Near East around it, such as Syria, Iraq, and Jordan. There's about 20 billion bushels of, of uh, wheat grown each year. And five of the top producers by tonnage is the top being China, next India, and USA, and Russia, and Canada. I mean, because it's so highly produced, it's got to be consumed too. So some of the top consumers are, you know, China, number one, again, and then India, and Russia, and USA, and finally Pakistan for top five. Wheat's grown is it's pretty easy to grow. It only takes a milder, temperate uh, climate as long as it's dry. And it can be grown anywhere from sea level to 10,000 feet. Um, and and it really doesn't take much rainfall at all to grow it. Only about 10 to 30 inches a year. And I mean, the soil can be anywhere from a sandy loam soil to clay. So it's pretty easy to grow. Well, there's a lot of varieties of wheat. Um, but the most common in the world today is bread wheat or common wheat, which is the most popular. As well as durum, spelt, emmer, and einkorn. Deep tillage of the soil is important for the preparation uh, to plant. Um, it's important to, to till up deep and tear up all the old uh, excess parts of the old harvest and you know any new weeds, as well as break up any compacted dirt. And you also need to add the necessary fertilizers, pesticides, or fungicides. Um, you may you won't need the same everywhere, and some places won't need much at all. But if any is needed, this is a good time to to apply it. Also in preparing you should make sure the field is shaped properly so there's no low spots that will hold water because everywhere needs to be drained evenly. The most common method of planting nowadays is through grain drills. 
Uh, they're pulled behind tractors, and at the first part of it, they have discs that cut furrows or grooves in the soil. And as it travels, it'll drop a line of seeds down in that furrow. And as it continues to pass over it, the final part of the grain drill will actually cover that furrow with the seeds in it with a small amount of soil. Typically, wheat's harvested uh, about 110 to 130 days after planting. When harvesting, you need to make sure that the stalks are dry so they can be cut easily. Also, you need to make sure that the seeds are dry so they won't spoil with storage and so they'll be hard, which will protect them when they're thrashed and when they're transported. When it's time to cut, though, the plants are dead, so they're vulnerable to be blown over by the wind. So it, it's very important to be prompt to cut right after they die. Uh, before they fall over. The most common way to harvest nowadays is with combines. Combines are um, like a tractor. They have a large spinning reel in the front. That wheel pushes the wheat into a sickle which cuts it off and then the crop is beaten or thrashed which separates the seeds from everything else. The seeds are sent into a grain tank and everything else is just blown out the back. Um, as the combine drives and harvests the wheat, tractors with trailers on the back will come up next side of it and an arm will swing outside the combine and it'll actually dump all of the wheat or all of the wheat seed into those trailers. And then that grain is actually taken to semi trucks and put in to those trailers and which takes them to market. Here's two pictures of combines. The top one's just harvesting and then the bottom one is actually harvesting and transferring seed from the combine to the trailer as it harvests. Uh, processing flour, um, the seed will go to the factory and it will be transferred to silos where it's soaked to help with the separation of the hull. And that brown outer shell is very nutritious but it's not used with the white flour, just the interior is pulverized for the white flour. But for brown, brown flour, both is pulverized. And if not pulverized, it's just separated, it's sent away for animal feed because it's highly it's high in protein. The flour is then packaged into a variety of sizes, anywhere from a small, you know, half pound bag to a fifty pound bag to a full truckload, and can be sent out all over the country to stores or bakeries or even exported to other countries. Wheat straw is another product of it. Um, after it's spit out the back, you know, when the seeds are taken, it can be a tractor can go out there with a baler and this baler actually picks it up and drives it and bales it into tight rolls or bales and bonds it with the string and spits it out in the field and then later a tractor will actually come and put that on a trailer and they'll either take that into a barn and store it for later in the year to use for themselves or they'll ship it out and sell it to other consumers. It's very nutritious in the fact that it's it's got High protein and starch that is very digestible, almost 99%. <clears throat> also, it's high in vitamins and minerals and fats. Wheat in the U.S. is uh, it's highly produced. You know, it's number three in the world. Some of the varieties are the hard, renter, hard red winter, soft red winter, hard red spring, the durum, the hard white, and the soft white. Some of the common diseases that we fight all the time are rust and smut, and some of the pests are the hessian fly and the chinch bugs. We use a lot of common methods of planting and harvesting with seed drills and with combines, and it's nice because it only takes a little bit of fertilizer or pesticides compared to other crops. And that's, that's wheat, so thank you.